From the great cities of Nashville and Murfreesboro, Tennessee, you are watching the Word Made Plain broadcast with Dr. Vincent L. Windrow Sr. and the Olive Branch Church. Our online platform, OB Nation, is designed to connect viewers in the virtual space to the powerful in-person experience happening here in the sanctuary. Be enthused. Be engaged as the Word of God is proclaimed through song, scripture, and service today. Well, 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 and welcome to the Bible study. I'm talking about the Word Made Plain, the Bible study edition. It's Wednesday. It's Wednesday, April the 10th. How do I know? Because I checked before we came on air. What is percolating, people of God? Have you had a good day, have you? I pray that you have. I know that God is still in the blessing business. I know that part. I don't know how much more I know. Well, I do know a little history, a little algebra, geometry, and uh, tanks of Spanish. Uh, yeah, see, oh, that's French. Uh, gracias. <laughs> has the Lord blessed you today? I bet he has. I'm not a bed man, I'm not a gambler, but if somebody pressed me to, I would bet that the Lord has been good to you. How good has he been to you? Put this, come on, put something in that chat right there. That one thing that the Lord blessed you with on today. How has he touched your life? I'm not talking about your neighbor's life. I'm not talking about your colleague's life. I'm not talking about your sibling's life. I'm talking about your life. How, that's the question. How has the Lord Bless your life on today. I'm not talking about a thousand things, although, although he has. I'm talking about one thing, one thing you can hone in on, one thing you can focus on. Put that in that chat. Put that in that chat, won't you? Huh? Hello. Happy Wednesday. Happy, happy Bible study day. Happy today. Don't you know today is the only day we have? Yesterday has come and gone. Tomorrow is yet to come. Today is the only day we have. Yesterday's in the past. Tomorrow is in the future. Today is the only day we have. How shall we live today? Hopefully, among other things, in unity. That's right. That's right. That's right. One of my most favorite Psalms is Psalm 133. Behold, check it out. Check it out. How good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in what? In conflict? No. In violence? No. In war? No. In unity? Yes. Behold, how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. It's, it's David observing people, participating in this unity, participating in this fellowship. And he says, man, check that out. Ain't that something? I'm talking about ain't that something? David talking. Ain't that something? Look at that. How good and how pleasant it is. It's heartwarming. It's heartening. Yes. To see people, particularly God's people, dwelling together in unity. The next time you see that, you say that. Behold, how good and how pleasant it is. For brethren to dwell together in unity. Amen. All right, all right, all right. What do we have going on? Coming up, coming up soon. Now, I took and told you coming up soon. I'm talking about what is this? This is the this is the tenth. This Sunday at both locations during both worship services in the vineyard. In the vineyard, we have something called the Vineyard Pep Rally. Pep Rally regarding the Tennessee readiness test. It's coming up, it's coming up, it's coming up, right? So we want to cheer on our students. Let me tell you this. I have been blessed uh, to have earned several degrees 
Now, education is not the only thing, but it is something. And in many cases, it is the separator. It is, uh, in some uh, uh, postings, job postings, uh, a, a degree is uh, required, right? It's not the only thing. All I'm saying is it is something. So let us encourage our people, particularly our young people, to get their education, to get their education, to get their education, to get there, and to do well, not just to hum, drum, buy, no, not just uh, 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 do it in a mediocre way, no, but to do well and to learn and to begin a lifelong uh, a lifelong commitment to learning. Whatever you're learning, let's continue to learn. So we got that pep rally coming up on what? April the 14th, Sunday, April the 14th. I'm talking about, that's this Sunday now. That's this Sunday. Bring your children. That's right. Bring them on, bring them on. And look, on May 3rd, May 3rd is the RSVP deadline for the annual Deaconess Ministry Prayer Breakfast, which is going to take place, it's going to occur on Saturday, May the 18th. What time is it? It's 10 o'clock. It's a breakfast. It ain't 2 o'clock. Uh-uh. It ain't 6 o'clock p.m. No, it's 10 o'clock on May the 18th. That's the Saturday. It's going to take place at our Murfreesboro location. Where is that? One, 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 five. Minerva Drive. Murfreesboro, the great metropolis of Murfreesboro, Murfreesboro, Tennessee, which is in the middle of Tennessee, by the way, the middle, the geographic, the geographical center of Tennessee is in Murfreesboro. Hello, and you don't remember this and neither do I, but it's in the history books. Murfreesboro was once upon a time the capital of the state. <laughs> Fun fact. All right, what we got going on? Is that good? I think that's it for now. Let, let us turn our attention now to our scripture as we proceed with the proceedings this evening. What do we have here? The second epistle of Paul the Apostle. Epistle Apostle, Epistle, Apostle, not Epistle, Epistle, Apostle, not Apostle, Epistle, Apostle. And this is the second Epistle of Paul the Apostle to the Thessalonians. That's right. That's right. We're going to look at chapter 3 and we're going to look at verses 11, 12, and 13. The King James translation, it reads in this manner. For we hear there are some which walk among you disorderly working not at all, but are busybodies. Now them that are such we command and exhort by our Lord Jesus Christ that with quietness they work and eat their own bread. But ye brethren, be not weary in well-doing. Amen. Come, let us pray. God, we thank you for being so wonderful. God, when we think about how wonderful you are, we are overcome with a great sense of appreciation and wonder. We thank you, God. We just thank you, we thank you, we thank you. You have been good to us, and we thank you. God, you have been kind to us and we thank you. You provided for us, God, and we thank you. God, thank you for this time. 
God, thank you for the production staff that who has committed itself to making this what it is. We give you thanks and praise for all the people that it will reach, that they will receive a, a higher degree of revelation, God, and instruction and inspiration relative to their own lives and to the lives, consequently, of those they'll come into contact with. We give you all the thanks, the praise, and the glory is yours. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. All right, all right, all right. My wife is a, not just a great wife, my wife is a great mother. And, 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 and one, of, one of the most enduring things that she has taught our children by word and by deed is to be an advocate for themselves to use their voices for their own good and gain, to speak up regarding their ideas, to speak up regarding their feelings, right? To be an advocate for themselves. She is a, an exceptional advocate for her health. And I have gained a lot. I've learned a lot from being married to her for almost 30 years, that she is an advocate for her own health, not just for the health of, of uh, uh, Lorenzo Jewell and me, but, but for her own health. She'll ask a whole bunch of questions, right? She'll dig, she'll Google, she'll be a doctor, and she'll, 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 she'll have options that, that she'll speak uh, with the doctor about, and I love it. Because it's, 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 it's a good way of self-care, it's a good way of treating yourself well, and it's a, it's a good example to other people. So, so, so she, she says, uh, be an advocate, use your voice, address those things that, that are necessar necessarily or, or that, that, that need to be addressed, right? A address them. Now, we're not talking about nitpicking, but, but we are talking about some things just need to be addressed. Right? So that that if 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 they need to be stopped, then you speak to that. The Apostle Paul addressed a bunch of things to the churches that he planted, that he started, right? So it, it's interesting that he would modulate his tone. He he may not speak the same or write the same way to the Corinthians as, as he would the Ephesians. Or he would, he, would, he would modulate, right? He would change his tone based on the subject matter and based on the audience. And that, that is such a great takeaway as a leader or, or, and as a person, as, as a husband and as a father, as a brother, right? As a, as a person, as a pastor, just at, just as a person that, 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 that there are ways to communicate that the outcome is better. Right. And, and, and so to speak, now I'm not speak. I'm not saying speak to some folk with respect and others with disrespect. That's not what I'm saying. What, what I'm saying is that, that you, it's, it's important to modulate it's important to make adjustments in tone and in tenor and in countenance, you know, how your, your, your face uh, when you talk to different people because people are different, right? And everyone receives things differently, right? And so if you want the message to not just to be, to be heard, but to be received and then applied, then govern yourself accordingly. Paul addressed a whole bunch of stuff to these churches, right? Out of love, inspiration out of love, correction out of love, rebuke out of love. Now, I just think there is love. I don't know about all this tough love. It's just love. And it's presented in different ways, but it is love, y'all. And it, it, I just, I just don't, subscribe to the whole idea of a tough love. No, it's the love 
that it's love that needs to be presented in a particular way. But ain't no, it ain't no, this is love. This is tough love. This is easy love. No, it is just love, 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 love. It's love. And out of his love for the Ephesians, for the Thessalonians, for the Corinthians, Paul wrote and he addressed certain matters. That's what's, that's what's popping off here in this second epistle of Paul the Apostle to the Thessalonians. Listen to what he says. Uh, for we hear <laughs> some of you, not all of you, but some which walk among you do so in a disorderly fashion, working not at all, but are busybodies. Ooh. Paul said the word on the street is, <laughs> the word on the street is that, that there are some folk among you uh, at this church at Thessalonica. It's, it's, it's some folk among you in this church who are, who are not busy, but you are busybodies. Yeah, you, you, you're not busy uh, doing something constructive. You're not busy contributing. You're not busy being employed, but you're busy, but you are a busybody. You need to get you some business. That's what I, that's what I read when he wrote, for we hear. Uh-huh. You know what's coming next. It, 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 for we hear. He, he, he leaned in. For, for, we, for we hear now. This is, this is what we heard. This is what we heard. That, 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 there, that some of y'all are not busy with your own business, but you are busy bodies. That's what Luther said. You're a busy body. Busy body. You remember that? I don't know which Luther it was. But it was Luther, busybody. It was the busybody. You were busybody. I don't even know if that was now. I'll have to go back and Google it. I'll be back if the Lord willing and the creek don't rise on next Wednesday to, to clarify that. Mm -hmm. so, so let's talk about what is going on. Paul is, is writing that some of you, he's addressing this thing that's going on in the church. I don't, I'm not offended by it. I don't think he's nitpicking, but out again, out of his love for the maturation, not just of the individual, but of the church, he is addressing it. That some y'all, some of y'all, some of y'all are idle. And because you are idle, you are disruptive because you are interfering in other people's business. Now, we here at Olive Branch know that there are two kinds of business. Your business and what? None of your business. <laughs> How about that? Am I right or am I right? I, I know I'm right. These people that he's referring to. Now, it's not all the Thessalonians. It's not all the members of the church at Thessalonica, but he's heard, right? Someone has told him that, you know, Apostle Paul, it's just some of us around here, we, we're, we're meddling. Uh huh. It's a, it's a meddlers, right? It's a meddler, it's a meddling going on around here, Apostle Paul. And I, and I think you should know. Yeah, because they're interfering in other people's affairs, in other people's business. They are meddling. Now, here is his instruction. He calls it a command. He's urging them in the name of Jesus to what? With quietness work and eat your own bread. In other words, mind your own business. Now that's a healthy habit, right? Isn't that a healthy habit? Minding your business is a healthy habit. 
How much more could you accomplish if you were minding your own business? How happier would you be if you were minding your own business? How much more praise could you offer God if you minded your own business? How much more could you contribute to community and congregation if you were minding your own business? So when we mind other people's business, when we're meddling in other folks' affairs, that takes up time, doesn't it? Right? Now, everything we do takes up time. It requires time to do it. I'm saying a more appropriate taking of time would be you for you to mind your own business. Here's what Solomon says in the book of Proverbs. Proverbs 26, 17. 26, 17. The Psalms, the book of Psalms 26. Then the Proverbs. That's right. Ecclesiastes after Proverbs. So Proverbs is between uh, the book of Psalms and Ecclesiastes. What did I say? 26 and 17. That's right. Now, about these folks who are meddling, who aren't minding their own business. This is what Solomon writes, Proverbs 26, 17. He that passeth by uh -huh, and meddleth with strife, not belonging to him, belonging not to him, is like one that taketh a dog by the ears. Now you know what's going to happen if you take a dog by the ears. Have you ever grabbed a dog rah, by his ears or by her ears? What do you think is going to happen? He just ain't going to bark. He's going to bite. What is Solomon saying? He's saying the same thing in essence that the Apostle Paul is saying. Mind your own business. Your life would be lighter if you would mind your own business. I'm talking about if you had something to do. If, 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 if there was a concerted effort on your behalf to, to make your own life better, I don't know how much time you would have to be in somebody else's business. Huh? Huh? Paul is saying, now, now this is what I heard. Now, and to those for whom this is true, Settle down, settle down and earn the food they eat. And as for you, brothers and sisters, who are not involved in somebody else's business, who is not taking up the position of a meddler, <laughs> he says, never tire of doing what is good. Now, what he has done he has juxtaposed. He has said, those who are meddling, that's bad. You're doing bad. Those who are not meddling, you are doing good and don't get tired of doing good. He says, be not weary in well doing. Right? So he, he, he corrects those busybodies. But for those who are not getting weary and well-doing, who are not tired of doing what is good, he's encouraging them. Man, that is, that's an example of great leadership, right? You, 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 not, you just don't correct those who aren't doing the right things, but you're encouraging and celebrating those who are doing the right things. He's telling one group to stop it, cut it out. He's telling the other group, keep it going. You're doing a good job. How about that? What does it take for us to mind our own business? And I am only talking about this from a healthy habit perspective. Because minding your own business is a healthy habit. If you could take the time that you meddle in other folks' business, and apply that time to doing something positive and productive with your own kids, 
and your own family and your own career and your own home, the own, your own career, then maybe life would be better for whom? For you. So what, 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 will, what will it take? Does it take for uh, somebody to tell you to mind your business? Maybe. Does it take for you to read this scripture and say, you know what? I done gone overboard. I am too deep in somebody else's business. Let, let me remove myself. And not just remove myself, but take that time that I've been investing in somebody else's business through meddling. I'm not talking about we're concerned about them or we're, we're trying to be considerate about them or, or we're showing them compassion. I'm not, you know, I ain't talking about that. I'm talking about you being in the meddling, you, you in the business meddling. Yeah. Take that time. Right. And apply it to our dreams, our own dreams, our own self care. Right. For we hear that there are some which walk among you disorderly, working not at all, but are busybodies. Now them that are such, we command and exhort, urge, strongly urge by our Lord Jesus Christ that with quietness they work and eat their own bread. We're warning you, right? Strongly urging you to get out of them folks' business and mind your own business, and there are benefits to minding your own business. Amen. And you who are minding your own business, keep up the good work. You're doing a good job. Thank you so very much. All right. I think that's it for tonight and for that healthy habit. How about that? Perhaps if you quit meddling in somebody else's business, you might open this word. <laughs> you, you, you might learn a thing or two about, about God and the Lord Jesus Christ and the Holy Ghost. You may be able to learn some biblical principles. Mm -hmm. You might be able to learn why they say the word of God is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. It's hard, or at least for me, it's hard for me to do two things at the same time. Maybe it is for you too. So if you're neglecting this because you're over there doing that, I encourage you to come back here and say, God, where am I falling short? God, help me show me in your word how life can be better lived how i can live a better life from this point forward a, a lighter life a more productive life a healthier life a life with more quality gotta be something huh i encourage you to do so well that's all of my time you know i want to thank you for yours God be with you until we meet again. Thanks for watching. We appreciate your attendance and worship today. Don't forget to like and share this experience on social media. If you wish to join OB Nation, please visit olivebranchchurch.org for more information or contact us at 615-941-1268.